and welcome back into the live Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey, producer Chris, once again behind the scenes for today's show as we are now one week into NFL free agency and the Cowboys have signed one outside player. So great Cowboys free agency so far for me. A, B, C, D, or F, the poll results going exactly how I thought they would. A or B have 5%. I'd love to hear from you guys. C has 17%. D has 35%. 44%, now it just changed, are voting F. I mean, that's what happens when you sign a, a veteran linebacker to a fairly cheap one-year deal. You bring back your nickel corner on nearly the vet minimum, uh, the long snapper, and special teams guy. It's not exactly an inspiring offseason, you know? Uh, I'll give some shout-outs here as it is, it's, it's F's. It's F's. Vanquish time, Unitive, G, uh, Jesus, or Jesus M, however you pronounce it, Ryan, Dustin, David, uh, Jacoby, Gerald, all F's. Robert Marsh says F. Toxic Tom Downey Burner says all in. Mm. Daniel says incomplete. That's nice. Kind of getting low on time there. Uh, the top available free agents are not particularly sexy. Uh, not Jeremy Chugs Burner says G, so a grade below an F. Luis says D. Universe says so bad it says Z. Uh, F's from Mac, Lonely, Alan, Richard, DJ, Twin, Lone. Uh, Richard says A+. Plus. Uh, Madman, I give it a C because Kendricks. I do like the, the Eric Kendricks signing. It's just that that can't be the only thing you do. You know? Uh, so grade free agency, A, B, C, D, or F. Uh, you'd think based on the poll results that there'd be less Fs in there, uh, but it's, it's pretty healthy on the Fs there. Here's today's super chat menu. $10 signed Drew Pearson mini helmet entry. We will raffle that off at the end of the month. $50, you go in the Beer Bong Hall of Fame, and I'll do a Beer Bong out of it. For one more day, it's not how many more fragrancy stuff we're going to get to do. It's probably the last real day. Uh, we'll bring back the $20 shots uh, for one more time here. Uh, by the way, those of you who, uh, when the computer crashed on Thursday, uh, those of you who didn't get your Super Chats answered, we did get them counted in, into the raffle entries. So if you put in 10, I gave you two entries. If you put in just the one, I even the $2 one, I, I put it into, just to say sorry about the computer crashing. So that's the Super Chat menu for the entirety of today's show. We will spend some time on the... Kind of interesting, uh, Dak Prescott contract restructure. It's not a full restructure, and it kind of like leaves the deal open or leaves the door open for the Cowboys being like, yes, we are going to pay Dak in August, which all the reporting does kind of point in that direction. I don't really get why you do that. Uh, this this restructure was termed a they uh, a good start to the Cowboys contract negotiations. I'm like, it is mid March. We're just now starting? Why? Doesn't really make any sense at all. Uh, so I have my doubts on this one. Because the Cowboys don't really seem to have a coherence plan. I think a plan of we're not going to do anything in free agency, then we'll extend Dak in August, which I think is a very real possible outcome here, doesn't make any sense to me. Because you know what they're going to do, right? They're just going to roll that cap space over. They're going to pay Lamb and Dak in August and free up like $40 million and roll it over. It's something, tell you that much. Uh, yes and no, that might be the, the correct answer uh, in the end. Madman, because they want to see what Trey has in the preseason. See, but I think that in theory, the timing of it in early August would be like before they play in the preseason. I will say this, though. I think Lance should take every preseason snap. Every preseason snap. Scott says if that was their guy that would handle the situation better, way better than they did. Yes, but also, they did that last year on time, too. Like, they didn't handle it well previously. That made him the highest-paid quarterback in the NFL. The, the process has always been bad, which I, I, I think is what's really pointing that. I totally agree. Uh, we have a super chat from Grant Rainwater. Bring back live voting mock drafts. We will do the fan-led mock draft again. I promise you guys we will make that happen uh, either early April, end of March. We, we will do the fan-led mock draft. Should be some fun. 
Uh, I was well, I was almost doing a new mock draft today, and I decided to pivot to draft targets instead. We'll we'll get to later on in today's show. Um, the real chance that the board just does not fall your way, and you, you miss out on your top guys in round one. You got to draft for need. It's kind of why I don't like what they've done in free agency so far. Ecuador man AOG, if they extend Dak in August, please God no. I am of the. I know Ecuador man doesn't want to pay Dak, and that's fine. You would be better off doing it now than you would be doing it in August. But this team seems to think the opposite is true of the longer they wait, the better off they are. It's very, uh, very confusing to me. Um, the path just doesn't, it's just a weird path that, 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 they've, that they've taken overall. So name, we'll go back to free agents here. Name a free agent who you would like to see the Cowboys sign. Not exactly a strong crop of players available anymore, is it? That list has thinned significantly. Uh, especially once you get down to like the affordable range players. Like, anyone good? Ah, too bad. You ain't getting Chase Young. You know? It's not going to happen. Um, OBJ and J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins. Alexander Madison. He's visiting the Raiders, by the way. Um, Stephon Gilmore, good answer, good answer. Gilmore and Dobbins. Uh, Connor Williams and Gil Gilmore or Howard, assuming you mean Xavier and Howard. Mike Williams, Budabaker's not a free agent, though. Uh, good thought, though. Ryan Nall, there we go. J.K. Dobbins, Dak's not a free agent. Does not count there, Ecuador man, even though you said not. Uh, let's see, bring back Gilmore, Connor Williams, Eric Armstead has signed with the Jags. So that's who you're referring to with, with Armstead there. Isaiah Simmons is a free agent. Denzel Perryman is a free agent. I think Cam Sims is under contract, but maybe not. David Irving, no. Although David Irving did pop off on Twitter again for the first time in like two years, saying he's too good to sign for the vet men. He wants more than that. How about a guy that just like didn't care about football? That, that, dude, that dude could be Chris Jones caliber player if, if he just gave a shit. And he just did not. Uh, Connor Williams. You might see Williams wait. Uh, I don't think he's ready to play yet. So that, that could very well be a post-draft signing for somebody. Some guy says, give me Iguodala. Uh, Earl Thomas. TKG says, me and you, producer Chris. Why do you have a death wish? For us. For us, I should say. Chase Young. Ah, they ain't got to pay that market. Promise you that much. Um. Earl Thomas has watched Eric Berry. Cowboys brought Eric Berry in for a visit the, the last time he was a free agent, and the medical was a big fat no. <laughs> and he never had a visit afterwards. From Mighty Ant 0215, the only splash he missed took a dump and got splashed back on his butt. Not great. Uh, although the meme Steven, the mean Stephen Jones comments will continue until morale improves. Dak lays eggs, probably not a, a good idea. Oh, okay, also, does he actually, though? Like, I think we all want better playoff results. Those games are, I think the Niners won last time was definitely more on his shoulders than anything else. I think the lack of anyone not named CeeDee Lamb being a playmaker hurt them in that game pretty significantly, too. But that could have dropped 50 points against the Packers, and I don't think that defense was getting a stop. That's, that, that's also why I, I, I really wish it was just like, you just got to change this one thing and everything will be fine. Even if that was the quarterback. It'd be nice to just change the one thing and fix it all. But it wasn't just the quarterback. It wasn't just the drop. It wasn't just the ground game. It wasn't just the offensive line, the coaching staff, the insert basically every player on defense. It was all of it. That's why you got your ass kicked so badly. That's what's frustrating to me. Because clearly like, Clearly, this, as it's set up right now, player coaching, roster building-wise, isn't working. So the plan of let's just not change anything, we know how that's going to go. So I would like to make changes one way or the other. And I'm not, I don't think that's the route the Cowboys are going to choose, and it's very frustrating to me. Speaking of the Cowboys, what is your confidence level in their front office? This should be fun great or fun answers to see, too. I think it's going to be a lot of low numbers in there. Uh, 1 to 10 is your scale. Oh, look, Kirk Cousins is going to wear number 18 for the Falcons. Gross. That's a bad quarterback number. 
Uh, 0, 6, 0, 10, negative 1, 0, 10, 0, uh, 10, negative 6, 6, 6, 1, 7, 0. 0.4, 10, negative 6.9, 4 or 5, negative 10, 5, 2, negative 1,000, 5 because of Will McClay, 3.69, negative 100, 0, 3, 5, 3, 28 years of data, 0, 0. 0.1, 0, 0, 4, 0, Will McClay, negative 8, 5, literally a 2, negative 81, 1, 1, all low answers. I mean, I get it. And I think it's also very funny to me. Uh, no matter which side of the DAC, uh, I'll call it a political debate, because that's kind of what it is to a certain extent. No matter what side of it you're on, you kind of don't like what the Cowboys are doing, do you? Which comes back to my preferred point of do, do a path. Pick one. Go be aggressive for a three- to five-year window or start a rebuild. And I think those answer, either of those I am more on board with than just not doing anything. Zeno saying, $5 super chat. Thank you, Zeno. I would love to know who the Dak haters want at quarterback that's even available. If they believe Dak's not going to win a Super Bowl, not a rookie. I will speak for them. Hopefully I'm speaking for them properly. Uh, I think the answer would be kind of, this is what I would do, bottom out and go draft somebody. Because if you're trying to win games now, Dak by far is your best option. It's not even a conversation. If your plan is to, you know, four years from now, be in the best space possible, then that's how you make the argument of let, let's, you know, move on now, take the dead, the dead cap hit, you know, get your books in order to the way Stephen Jones likes it, spend some money in free agency. At some point, uh, you, you would hope, because they don't like to spend money in free agency when the quarterback's super cheap, and then hope you get lucky at, at the, the quarterback spot. Knowing that you're interjecting a lot more risk involved there. I can go look at some of these recent, like a 30% chance of making the quarterback pick right. Dangerous game to play. From Roman Wolf Gaming, how much is our salary cap right now, and what could it be? Uh, I'll pull up the SPO track numbers here. Uh, I, I haven't, they should have around five, seven million dollars. They got them at eight, that, that sounds about right to me. Give or take a couple thousand dollars here or there. Um, if they were to extend CD Lamb, they'd save thir up to $13 million. If they really wanted to, I don't think they want to, and I wouldn't advocate for all these guys, but you could restructure Terrence Steele, Donovan Wilson, Brandon Cooks, and save about $10 million. If you wanted to uh, restructure Trayvon Diggs, uh, I think you'd be at the you'd be at $7 million there, so you're already past 30, and that's without, you're about up to 30, without touching the DAC contract, which could free up another, you know, 20-ish million dollars, give or take there. It's a lot of money if you wanted to. They clearly don't want to. Ecuador man, what more do you Dak fans need? 16 years to win SMH. If you don't think Dak's the guy to win a championship with this team, then I think you should start the rebuild now. If you think that he is, then you want them to be a little bit more aggressive. I think it's... it's it's also a little bit dangerous. I understand it, and it's what we all want in the end. Uh, if you adopt a championship or bust mentality, which 28 years, I understand it, the, you're going to be in the disappointment side far more frequently. You know, I think you can look around the NFL and go, you have a top 10 quarterback. That's a pretty good spot to be. But if this team also isn't going to spend the way they need to spend to be competitive with other teams that spend money in free agency. You know, Dak is not Mahomes. He's not going to single-handedly elevate that, 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 that team. Finding that guy is super hard to do, but if that's what the bar is, then there you go. Chris B., a $5 super chat. This offseason has been so demoralizing. I have no faith in this team and, and, and the front office. Can't wait till draft is over so I can tune out until training camp. That that can be a very boring time between you know, the week, two weeks after the draft into uh, into training camp. There will be quite uh, quite boring, I'm sure. But 
again, I think it, whatever you want in the end is going to be very disappointing. Like they're not going to make moves. They're not going to move on from guys necessarily either. It's just very frustrating to me. Uh, the Great Duke Bothers is, is making my point for me that um, saying it's, it's just like Rome. Everything Dak is the only problem with the roster. He's not. Dak and Rome are both good, good QBs. Coaching, sports staff has never been good enough. The Dak Cowboys and the Romo Cowboys remain the same team. There are games when, yep, it was the quarterback's fault, and there are other games where it is not. I think the big reason why you've had such good playoff success is even in the Romo era, you had the, the really good quarterback, the great receiver, the great you know, pass rusher, the great defensive player, Micah, uh, DeMarcus Ware, you know, Dez, and then some other good supporting cast receivers as well. And then once you get to the playoffs, ah, things get, those other teams have them too, and your deficiencies elsewhere and your coaching staff or the personnel kind of show pretty similar there. And there were some really great Romo teams too. We really, again, I think like this past year reminds me a lot of that 2007 Cowboys team. Reminds me a lot of it. From Roman Wolf Gaming, how bad would Stefan Diggs hurt us pick and money-wise? Money-wise, it'd be about $19 million on the cap this year. You could negotiate that and push that figure down with a restructure. The issue is the Bills lose salary cap space, and that doesn't make sense for a team that wants to, to be a playoff contender. They're going to trade away their only good receiver to take on a $31 million dead cap charge. Now, I will say... If the Bills don't adjust this contract figure this, this offseason and they keep it at $27.85 million, next year that deal becomes much more movable. So I think that is the path that they will end up uh, pursuing. That maybe they give it one more year and then revisit the Stefan Diggs situation. Before we get into today's live show, if you wish the Cowboys had spent more in free agency, and more than just bottom-of-the-barrel active cash spending, as they so often do, then like today's video for me right now. The more likes we get, the more evidence we have of maybe we can buoy the Cowboys into doing more things. I still take full credit for bullying them into the Eric Kendrick signing. I think me and, me and Connor's threatening to do, uh, to do some hard drugs, I think, really kind of buoy the Cowboys into it. From Zeno saying, $5. Thank you, my friend. No quarterback other than Dak gets so much hate and expectations. Lawrence, Murray, Herbert, and Zolos not won a Super Bowl, yet they all get praise. Uh, they got one playoff win combined them up between them all, too. I, I will say this, too. I'm not trying to be negative to those guys. Imagine not just national media's and fandom's jokes. Imagine how pissed we would be if Dak put up a playoff collapse the same way that Deshaun Watson and Justin Herbert did when they're blowing three score leads. Imagine if Dak Prescott in a playoff game had put up uh, this stat line in the same way that Kyler Murray did uh, when Kyler Murray was 19 of 34 for 137 yards, zero TDs, two interceptions, and then pouted on the sidelines and didn't want to go back, go back in the game once it was over. That's not good. Now, I think Lawrence is in a kind of a bad situation in Jacksonville. I, Trent Baalke sucks. I'd rather have – he. I think he's the worst GM in football, including your own, which is saying something pretty significantly. Um, but I think it's just the, the differences in how players get viewed because those are much smaller markets. Charters not very, are still not a very big market, even though even playing in, L, in L.A., not, not a big, big market at all. Coming up on today's show, some Cowboys news and rumors, some more realistic trade targets. There might be a couple names that have been linked to Dallas I'll throw in there that I don't buy, but a lot of these guys are much more affordable, i.e. you're not moving your first round pick and change to go get T. Higgins, for example. Cowboys mailbag, two ways to get on the show, hashtag Cowboys or Super Chat, and then we'll break down some Cowboys draft targets as well. All coming up live here on the Cowboys Report. The Cowboys Report is also on Instagram, folks. Give us a follow over there at Cowboys Report IG. We'll post some more short-form videos on that platform, including one we did earlier this afternoon before our live show about the official announcement that Leighton Vanderesh has called it a career. Announced his retirement today. 
Uh, officially, I st- the Cowboys had already cut him. I think this was a timing thing for Dallas of let's release Van Der Esch uh, to guarantee him the base salary stuff that he was owed and not to do the whole process of injury guarantee, whatever. He still gets that, and he does, as expected, you know, call it a career. Well, I, I appreciate what Van Der Esch was able to do before the injuries just became too much for him. Show him some love by typing L-V-E in the comments section. Let's go to the other news here, which was, I was kind of surprised this one came down the way it did. The Cowboys and Dak Prescott agreed to, I'm calling it a, a little baby restructure on his contract. It's noteworthy for a couple different reasons here. It's only a fraction of the new money he was going to be due this year. He had a $5 million roster bonus. That saves $4 million in cap space because the Cowboys added void years onto his contract. That actually required an agreement from Dak Prescott slash Todd France to do. It was not a simple restructure that was already baked into the deal. The Cowboys had to get Dak to agree to do that. It does bring down his cap hit fairly slightly to about $55.5 million. The cap hit next year, and we'll just round out, $40.5 million when he's not under contract. It does still leave his sizable $29 million base salary untouched at this time. It doesn't really do that much for you in 2024. Helps pay for some you know, vet minimum re-signings or signings you'll eventually end up making. What it does do, however, is keep the door open for an extension, which the team continues to push through public outlets and leaks to the media, etc., that the, ex- the extension is their plan. They plan to get a deal done with, with, with Prescott in the end. The, p- the plan and the process to do that, I think, has been pretty bad. If the reports of, hey, maybe mid-August is the time frame there, that doesn't really help you very much right now, and I question the purpose of doing it that way, but you pair the plan to do it in mid-August with this move, and it actually does align. It's just not the alignment I would have preferred. I have more on this to come here. But will the Cowboys extend Dak Prescott, whether it's now or at least before the start of this year's NFL season? Why for yes, N for no. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments section, the pinned comment, actually, of today's video. I still, as I've said before, I need to see them do it first. You know, Stephen Jones said, We think it'll be done without much fanfare or just kind of without much conversation. Clearly not the case. We're already way past that point. What is noteworthy to me is what Michael Gelkin sent out about the restructure plan, saying, quote, the Cowboys and Dak Prescott are off to a strong start in contract talks, demonstrating collaborativity to help the team manage finances. Prescott willing to add two void years into $4 million in 2024 cap savings. Good sign for capacity to, to achieve an extension. Here's my issue. Why are they just now starting? If we, if we take all of these reports as true, and it's not some grand conspiracy to cover up a rebuild plan, but you're also doing a bad job of rebuilding if that's the case, you are starting it in mid-March when the rest of the NFL has already paid dudes in free agency? I still hate it here. This is not a good process. So maybe they actually do want to wait until August to do something with the quarterback contract, which again, I think is stupid. Either do it now or rebuild. I, there's, you know, you're not getting the benefits of doing you know what they're going to do. They're going to roll that cap space over. They're going to sit there and say, oh, we didn't have the money to do anything in free agency and then have a bunch of money in, in, at the end of the year once they pay CD Lamb 2 and roll over like 30 or $40 million. Yikes. Now, Stephen Jones did make this comment leading into the news of the restructure at the PBR thing because the Cowboys would rather do, uh, do publicity events than, you know, do free agency work. Dak is willing to work with us, and we've had great discussions about him and his contract. He's, an, he's all in, kill me now, on working with us, and we've had personal discussions with Dak as well. Other than that, that's about all we'll say about our negotiations with him. We, we want to keep those private. We don't want to get into timelines or anything like that. Certainly a priority of ours. That quote does make sense in hindsight uh, because you had to negotiate with Dak to make sure that that goes down. You couldn't just do it on your own. So maybe Stephen Jones and Todd France have communicated. Or maybe 
Maybe the Jones boys and Steven tried to kind of backdoor their way without Todd France, which would not be the first time they've tried to go around the agent to squeeze in a deal, which does not go over well once the agent finds out about it. Whatever the Cowboys' true plan is, it remains pretty damned messy and murky. It's not a good place to be in. I don't like their process at this stage. So we'll see what else happens, but I don't think the DAC wars will be ended anytime soon. Now, we are losing the March sub battle against Giants now. We're down by, I will round up and say 500 subs. The Giants have done things in free agency, so we're playing behind the eight ball from that perspective. If you want more free Cowboys videos, hit that sub button for me right now. Let's talk some free agency options here, then we'll go back to some news items for Dallas. Blogging the Boys suggested the Cowboys pursue J.K. Dobbins, an NFL free agency. And I do think this makes some sense. I also think there are some very valid cons here. Upside-wise, Dobbins is the best player available at the running back position. But it's upside because he's been unable to stay healthy for far too long in his NFL career, and that's a very real, real red flag. A lot more on this to come. But would you sign J.K. Dobbins? S for sign, P for you'd pass, you're going a different direction. Get those votes in for me right now. When Dobbins has played, this has been a almost six yard per carry back. And that is very, very valuable. And that is, that's a good full yard better than anyone else out there in the free agency market can offer at this stage. It's just that He's played nine games in three years, which is a horrible ratio. And if you sign J.K. Dobbins, you still can't trust him to, to, to be your guy. So Dobbins stands out there as among the better options. Alexander Madison, as of filming, visiting the Raiders. Uh, scat back types like Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Jarek McKinnon. Uh, more lead back types, Deonta Foreman, Damian Harris, Ezekiel Elliott coming off another down year in New England. Cordero Patterson, uh, kind of a third down back, but he's up there in age two. Maybe a gamble on previously good results. Rashad Penny, Cam Akers, all of those things could make some sense. I'll, I'll keep including Rico Dowdle here too, since he's a free agent after all. Uh, he would be the RB1 if you were to re-sign on what I assume would be a cheap one-year deal, little to no guaranteed money. And it's Deuce Vaughn who could compete for a third down back role. Lipke could be a, a power back slash fullback for you. Malik Davis, Snoop Connor are fighting for maybe RB3 or 4. You don't want those guys starting real snaps for you. And specifically for J.K. Dobbins, but in general too, a post-draft signing could make some sense. And I could see Dallas saying, we're going to wait. We're going to wait and see how the draft plays out. Because those backs, most of them should still be available after the draft. Because at a certain point, the backs want to wait too. What they don't want to do is sign with Dallas and then have Dallas spend its second round pick on the back and go, ah, well, now I'm kind of not going to have the same rule I was going to have previously. So I think waiting could provide some clarity for both sides, and both sides might view it as better financially for them too, regardless of who that back ends up being. Now, Cowboys NFL Jam shirts are on sale for you guys. Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons, or the throwbacks to the good old days, Trey Aikman and Michael Irvin, all through Fanatics, not the Cowboys team shop. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. We'll put that link in the comment section and the description of today's show. That's Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. The other free agent name mentioned by Blogging the Boys was Michael Thomas, and I have thoughts on this one. Uh, wide receiver is a need, maybe not a massive need for Dallas, with Michael Gallup now officially released. It's great wide receiver one in CeeDee Lamb. Brandon Cooks, who I think could be your third option if we put Jake Ferguson here on this list at tight end as option two. Jalen Tolbert, Kevontae Turpin, Jalen Brooks, a couple former UDFAs, veterans like my, uh, Martavis Bryant, Racy McMath. I would like to add some more wide receiver talent. Um, however... I don't know if Michael Thomas adds that to you. Um, it, it doesn't really make any sense. Um, Thomas has missed a ton of games. He's played 20 games in the past three years. The 1,700-yard the receiver is gone. He ain't coming back anytime soon. I, I am simply not a huge fan of 
going down this route for Dallas. I get that he's a big name, but Thomas doesn't offer speed or big plays anymore, at least not at a consistent enough clip to justify it. And that's what I'm searching for at wide receiver. The thing that Michael Thomas did great was slants, and teams could not stop. That's why Slant Boy was never an insult, because they couldn't stop him. Who would I rather call a slant for in, in 2024? CeeDee Lamb? Michael Thomas. Brandon Cooks? Michael Thomas. When I go get a receiver, I'd say draft somebody. But you got to fill other needs to be in a position to do that luxury, quote unquote. So name a free agent who you would like to sign. Could be Michael Thomas, J.K. Dobbins, or somebody else altogether. Get that answer in for me in the comments section right now. One more minor news item. Al Harris has had a promotion in title and rank. He has now added assistant head coach to his title, um, which I think is noteworthy. I, again, I don't know if he's ever going to make a great defensive coordinator or if he's going to be the schematic guy. He might fall into the Mike Vrabel bucket. And this might be a hot take as well. Who, you know, Vrabel wasn't that great as a defensive coordinator. However, he was a great position coach and became a very, very good NFL head coach. And maybe the things that Al Harris does best, leadership, technique stuff, translate better to, you know, head, head coaching roles than it would be straight defensive coordinator. But I do like the promotion for Al Harris. You know, the Cowboys blocked him from going to Washington. And this is a good way of, if he really did want to go to D.C., we'll see if that's the case or not. This is a good way to keep him nice and happy. So great Cowboys free agency so far. A, B, C, D, or S? Or F. I think I said S there somehow. S for sad. Uh, some super chats we'll get to here. And get your comments in. In the meantime, as it's all Fs at this stage. Ecuador, man, who gives a damn? They're not our quarterback, other teams' problems. The reason why I think it's important to know how things look across the NFL is it's all a comparison. Like, you want to know what the market looks like for other teams, what those other teams have, because play is all relative. It's very easy to get too high or too low if you're only watching one team play. I'm not saying that's what the case is what you're doing there, Ecuador, but I think just in general, that's something you should always be aware of. Like, I think the Cowboys made a mistake the way they judge the running back market. The Zach Moss deal would have been a good one. And I think other teams signed backs that kind of got, got, you know, caught flat-footed. Draft time. You want to know what other teams have around you. Otherwise, you might trade down too far or trade up when you didn't need to, something along those lines. So I do think knowing what the overall needs and talent level and play from other quarterbacks like we mentioned those guys right Herbert Murray Trevor Lawrence will soon join that list they all became the highest paid quarterback in football or close to it so that's that's the market you're competing against contract wise from the great Duke bothers haven't heard of updates on Diggs or Overshone think they'll be ready by September expectation is those guys are going to go for at least a start training camp those injuries happened early enough Overshones in particular I think training camp is a very real uh, expectation for them to return. The now return to performance, we shall see uh, on that front. That's, that's always a bit more anxiety-inducing. Delunatic, two free agency signings you would like Stephen Jones to make today. Uh, anybody. Um, oh, okay, honest answer, honest answer. Bring back Stephon Gilmore and make your pick of a veteran running back. I'd love to find that offensive line, but that market sucks, and it's just, I, don't, I don't see him going down that path, frankly. Uh, we get to Mark Super Chat here momentarily. Uh, of note, the Niners are going to forfeit their fifth-round pick next year and have their fourth-round pick move to the back end of the round after a league review found administrative payroll accounting errors that resulted in a misreporting of the club's cumulative player compensation. Uh, NFL realized they would have been on the cap anyway, but they made, a go they made an o oopsie. So I'm, I'm going to fire off a quick tweet here. Ooh, what should I tweet about this? This is fraud. This is, maybe, maybe just, 
this is fraud. There's a way to tie this in. Was it 2022? Let me me check that. Yeah, at the end of the 2022 year, I got it. This is fraud. They should forfeit the 2022 playoff games. There we go. Let's go forfeit. There we go. There we go. Decision made. We we fixed it. Uh, Mark's $5 super chat here. I think Jerry Jones is going to end the season with Dak $58 million to see how he does. I don't agree with that, and that's coming from a guy who does not like Dak. Clowns. It is down to 55 now. If that makes you feel better, it shouldn't at all. Um, we know exactly how that's going to go, by the way. Just like the past playoff games have all gone. Like, it's, it's the definition. It's worse than the definition of, of insanity to do a... And make the team worse when we knew it wasn't good enough last time. Like, that's, that's just, like, how do we think that's going to go, you know? I, I just don't get it. It's a lunatic. Percent chance that 73, Tyler Smith is our left tackle week one. Hope your family is good. Thank you, lunatic. I appreciate that. 40%? I think they want to draft somebody in round one at, to play left tackle. I don't know if they'll find that guy. Maybe 30, 35%. I think, they, I think they think he's going to be best at guard. But depending on how the board falls for you, left tackle for Tyler Smith might be your best option. So possible for sure. From Mark, we signed Hankins by chance. Not yet. I know Seattle's expressed some interest in him with Adam Dirty up there. Uh, why chances are our only run stopper? JJ and in his infinite wisdom believes Bass and Sam can step right in. I have no words, Tom. I would be, the Hankins one, like, they are going to get Mozzie Smith's weight back up. Uh, Brian Broaddus had reported that they're going to have him play nose guard, thank God. You still need a veteran option. And the vet options are not very good outside of Hankins. And I really can't add draft a starting caliber nose guard to my needs list right now. I got I to find a left side player. I'd love to find a center. I'd love to find a wide receiver. I'd love to find a linebacker. I'd... Love to, I need to find defensive end depth. Wouldn't mind a corner. Would love a center. I can't add nose guard to that list too when, when I just spent a first round pick there. That's why you want to go the, the vet route. Lone Wolf, thoughts on the 105 through the fan controversy? Uh, I assume this is about the, the Dak stuff. So if you haven't heard already, uh, Dak, first off, Dak struck first, I guess, in terms of the, the lawsuit battle. Uh, what happened was, and this, I'll, I'll put this, all allegedly, that way I can clear it out of the way and, and not have to say allegedly 10,000 times here. Um, uh, Dak had been accused of sexual assault uh, from a 2017 incident with her and, her and her lawyers sending Dak a letter saying, we won't go public or seek a criminal investigation if you give us $100 million. Now, that, that happened in f- late February, Almost, almost seven years to the day of the incident, which between that and the $100 million has led many Cowboys fans to go, that doesn't pass the smell test. Uh, it also seemingly didn't pass the uh, national fan smell test because the response was all jokes on social media. They did not take it very seriously, which I, I don't like in general, but so be it. Uh, then 105 through the fan let the accuser's lawyer come on and without really challenging them on any of the facts, just kind of like lay out their angle to it, which is very unusual to have happen. Um, you might get some statements from the, from the lawyers involved, but radio interviews don't happen very often. It also raised concerns when it went on the show of the guy that had wished Dak got hurt and said he'd never play again and has you know made maybe some, not maybe, has made racial comments in the past. Um, and then also raised red flags. Alleged, this is very much legit because the Facebook account's been deleted, but there were screenshots of the lawyer saying that Dak sucks and hating on him and saying uh, he's a real Cowboy fan because he hates Dak. Uh, so, frankly, to answer it shortly, I don't think they handled it that great, and I'm not trying to take shots at him because I know a bunch of people over there that, that are, you know, are good people, but I don't 
think that's the way to go about it, frankly. Um, if we are being honest, what I do is not journalism. And what 105 of the fan is, does isn't really journalism. So I think you can just let the real journalists handle that. And let the courts play it out rather than kind of give an open platform for just the, the ones that... I know they invited Dak's lawyer, but of course he said no. Um, also, police are investigating both sides of it. Uh, I don't think there can be any civil case from her end because the statute of limitations already expired. So there's just a lot of, a lot of, it's messy across the board. How about that? From Mark, $5 super chat. Thank you, Mark. Scraped by two decent teams in Miami and Detroit. Got killed. Scored 10 on the Niners and Bills. Jerry's all in is replacing Armstrong with Sam, losing a center and such. They're not all in. They're just not. This all in is not how everyone else views all in. I'll stick with the poker analogy I've made before. Cowboys are sitting on 9, 10 of hearts or whatever flop you want to go with. And Jerry says, I'm all in while pushing in three chips. The other goes, sir, you're not all in. He goes, my definition is different than your definition. Too bad, Jerry. There's one definition of all in. We can't just twist our words and spin it to be like, ah, we're all in on different guys. It's not what all in means. They also, in many ways, are non-committal to, like, everyone in the organization right now. Like, very, very disappointed with the handle things so far. Here's today's Super Chat menu. $10, the Drew Pearson mini helmet. Signed mini helmet raffle entry. A lot of names in there already. $50, you're going to the Beer Bong Hall of Fame. 20 bucks. the deal of the day is a shot. So $50 for the Beer Bong, 20 for a shot. 10 to go in the uh, Drew Pearson mini helmet, signed mini helmet raffle. Lone Wolf, very nuanced take. I appreciate the, the thoughtfulness. Uh, thank you, Lone. I hope I handled that decently well enough. I am of the opinion of let things play out. They, they will play themselves out. Sometimes it's okay to not have a take on something, especially when it's you know far more serious matter. So um, I, will, I will both sides that a little bit if I did that properly, I, I hope. If you have not already, please follow the Cowboys Report on Instagram. We'll post short-form videos up there as well. At Cowboys Report IG is that handle. It is linked uh, in the comments, I believe. Plus, it's you type in Cowboys Report, you should find it pretty quickly on Instagram. Five more dollars from Mark. Deuce, Hoff, Bass, Sam to replace Pollard, Beatish, Tyrone, and Armstrong. I think those starters need upgrades, and this ain't it. I hope I am wrong, clowns. Should I do a, a, another clown thumbnail? Because that worked to get Eric uh, to get uh, Eric Hendricks signed. Well, I completely agree. I will say, I think at least two of those guys will be placed via early round draft picks. But that's not. You only have so many draft picks. Uh, this team on paper, I don't see very many paths to being better from what it was last year outside of significant improvement from various players on your roster. And why would you gamble on that if you're all in? Chris B, try using Jerry Jones' all in at Vegas. Good luck. They'll say that's not how it works, sir. Please leave the, the uh, table. It's just not. You, it's, you can't just like invent your own definitions of words and say, oh, well, I, have, I, have, I think it means a different thing. No, it's not how this works. You have to be specific and be accurate with your terminology there. This is the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Today's show, I figured we'd take a look at some potential trade targets for the Cowboys. NFL free agency winding down. The Cowboys, again, have done very, very little in the outside market. So some trade options for Dallas. Now, if they make a trade, we will have a video for you. Hit that sub button if you haven't already done so, for more free Dallas Cowboys YouTube videos. I want to begin with my favorite one, and this is Khalil Herbert of the Chicago Bears. The Bears paid big money to DeAndre Swift. They drafted Roshan Johnson the third round last year, and they have zero day three draft picks. So Khalil Herbert kind of stuck his RB3 in Chicago, I think makes a lot of sense for a team like Dallas. He's been fairly productive in the past, 
You could pair him with a third down back, let him kind of be your early down back in Dallas. And in theory, I don't think he's going to be that expensive. The running back trade market has not been very good for a long time. DeAndre Swift went for a future, future day three pick. That's like two rounds discounted from where it is. And I think given what the Bears don't have in terms of draft capital, what they do have at the running back position, I think that makes for a logical trade partner. Now, originally I was going to make make this a fifth round pick. But I'm like, you know what? Running backs are devalued still, at least in the trade market. The running back, the the contract was a little bit better, still not as high as it once was. If they want the fifth, sure. Maybe they'll settle for that sixth round selection. So I'm going to go this path. I am going to go with the Cowboys getting a, giving up a sixth round pick. Bears give up Khalil Herbert. Dallas can still draft a back, but it gives them a, a Zach Moss caliber free agent addition, basically. Contract's fairly cheap, only for a year. Costs them a day three pick that they could use on a backup defensive tackle, whatever. I think that'd be a good trade for Dallas. Now, I know I will see other running backs in the uh, comments, so I did want to mention a few of them here. Uh, many of you have asked about these first two names, Tyler Algier, Damian Pierce. Both these guys are still the RB2 for their respective teams. So maybe Atlanta goes, we only need B. John Robinson. Maybe Houston goes, we only need Joe Mixon, which I don't really agree with right there. I think there's a decent chance those two guys stay because they are so cheap and they are top backups. Uh, Jeff Wilson, meanwhile, could be cut even in by Miami. He's fairly inexpensive, only a couple million dollars. I'm a bit surprised they haven't cut him already, frankly. And they go pretty deep at running back. You know, they've got... Their top guy, Devon A. Chain, who's not going to be traded, Raheem Mostert, you know, Savon Ahmed, and Chris Brooks. So Wilson's RB3 or 4 at best. So I do think exploring the trade market for a running back makes a lot of sense. So should the Cowboys trade for a running back, potentially in addition to drafting one? It's the pinned comment on today's show. If that ad comes on YouTube, take advantage of it. Why for yes and for no. Another one of my favorite options here is Daxton Hill. That is the Bengals defensive back. He was a safety last year for Cincinnati. The difference is Daxton Hill has now seen the Bengals add both Von Bell and Geno Stone as potential starters, leaving him kind of without a position. I think his best spot might be nickel corner. Now, you already did bring back Jordan Lewis, but he's pretty cheap. I think exploring, seeing what the cost is of a a former first-round pick who has some ball hawking abilities, would be very intriguing. Would the Bengals give him for next to nothing? No, I don't think so. The lack of a fourth-round pick could be an issue there. That's, that's a name I'm very intrigued by. Next up is Walker Little of the Jacksonville Jags. Now, when Tyron Smith first got hurt, the, you know, not first, but the last time he got hurt real bad, the Cowboys had been linked to Walker Little per a Jacksonville report. Walker Little is right now kind of stuck as the swing tackle in Jacksonville, behind Anton Harrison and behind Cam Robinson. The numbers have been okay, but if you could get him for a day three pick, I'm I'm, I'm thinking day three picks pretty much across the board here. That could solidify your left tackle for a little bit and be a better option than a veteran. You can still draft somebody too if you really wanted to. A more expensive but also better option could be Garrett Bowles out in Denver. Now, he's due $16 million this year. That is an issue for a team that doesn't like spending very big amounts of money, and I understand it. He's a solid tackle, though. He's not a superstar player. Uh, $16 million, though, almost what Jonah Williams got, and Williams is not better than Garrett Bowles is. I don't know if Denver's going to shop him. I have a better chance of getting him than Cortland Sutton, who I don't think is actually available, by the way, anymore. But Bowles is a... Bowles and Little, left tackle options that are tough to find in free agency or the trade market. Now remember, if you haven't already, to please subscribe. We'll do draft targets. We'll do some more free agent targets as well. Just talking trades today. Daily videos, frankly, multiple times per day. Hit that sub button right now. Now this one is more your pipe dream, but this is somebody in J.C. Horn of the Panthers that we know the Dallas Cowboys love that they were, they were thinking it was going to be J.C. Horn or Patrick Sertan. They were going back and forth on which one they were going to try to acquire, thinking about it, thinking about it. Ended up both guys went off the board, and they settled, quote-unquote, for a trade down in Micah Parsons and 
boy, uh, that sure worked out pretty well for them, didn't it? J.C. Orange's biggest issue, he can't stay healthy. When he has played, he has been really good. Um, the issue is he has not played very much. So I have no idea what his trade value would be as Denver overhauls their secondary and has 1.5 good players out there, not including Jason Horn and Dane Jackson and maybe Troy Hill too. I think it might be a they want more than Dallas would be willing to give up. But if Carolina is still in kind of like fire sale, rebuild, a weird adjustment time frame mode, player the Cowboys liked. It's a Will McClay special right there. So name a player, realistic please, who you would like the Dallas Cowboys to trade for. Sound off for me in the comments section right now. Another potential trade target is Hassan Reddick. Now this, I'm only putting him on here because Mike Fisher reported the Cowboys had interest in Reddick. Philadelphia has once again begun to overhaul their pass rushing room. They're keeping Josh Sweat. Uh, they spent big money on Bryce Huff. They have Nolan Smith still. They uh, brought back Brandon Graham. I think they'll move Reddick, but he wants a big contract. You know, he's going to be pushing for something in that $20 million per year range, I would bet. Even if he settles for $16 million, that's still a little bit higher than what the Cowboys typically like to do. So I wanted to put him on here because he has been you know, linked before by Fish. As I said last time, I would be very surprised if this went down. If he gets cut, non-zero chance of that. Uh, potentially at that stage, we could revisit it. Let's get some defensive linemen up in this piece. And I, I thought about Broderick Martin, too, but he was just drafted, so we'll pass on him for now. I would keep an eye on how the market and how the Lions plan to utilize Levi, uh, Levi Onzerike, the former Washington Husky who I liked coming out of, of his draft class. Uh, the issue for Onzerike is he has not really been able to play all that much. 2021, that, that year he came out, he had 35 tackles, a couple TFLs, a sack, showing some promise there. Uh, he just, but then he has battled injuries for a good portion of his time in the NFL. He had a back injury, massive red flag. Um, you know, he didn't play at all in 2022. He barely played at all in 2023. I think the Cowboys, plus he's from Allen, Texas, by the way, have a decent amount of interest in him. If the medical checks out, that's a way to provide some defensive tackle depth that this team is going to be challenged to get because the free agency market was so wildly out of control. Now, what do you think? The percent chance that Dallas makes a trade by the end of the draft, not a pure draft pick only trade, so they trade for or away involving a player. I think that percent chance is. Go vote in the comments. Another lion, which is kind of funny how it all turned out there, uh, Malcolm Rodriguez. Now, I would argue through little fault of his own, he has kind of been phased out of the Lions linebacking core. It's been uh, Alex Anzalone. It's been Derek Barnes. Uh, Jalen Reeves-Mabin. Jack Campbell was their first-round pick. Rodriguez, who I think if he had been on the board and the Cowboys took Devin Harper, was going to be their next pick, by the way. Dallas could rectify that. I think a day-three pick is all it would cost and you're getting a better player than you'd probably get with that you know, sixth-round late pick at the linebacker spot. Another defensive tackle option, you could put a couple different Steelers on this list. Um, you, know, you could put maybe an Isaiah Loudermilk, a Montrevis Adams maybe too. I'll go with DeMarvin Leal, the, the former third-round pick. Always was kind of a tweener for me, which does raise concerns. But Cameron Hayward, Keanu Benton, Larry Ogunjobi, all head of those last three names I mentioned. Former third-round pick, does have talent. Maybe Mike Zimmer could maximize him in a better, more impactful way. But I'm trying to find some buy-low draft options here that wouldn't cost you too much and fill in some much-needed depth on the back end. You knew he was going to be on here, didn't you? Stefan Diggs, almost required by my contractual uh, rule to do it. He continues to mention in trade rumors, uh, which I, I continue to not buy them. So if it's your first time watching, allow me to explain why I don't think it happens. It's money. The Bills trade away Stephon Diggs, and they lose 
three plus million dollars in salary cap space versus if they just kept him on the active roster. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would they do that? Now, if they don't adjust his cap hit and he carries that big old cap hit of $28 million ish in the next year, I think there is a real chance next offseason he gets dealt. But this year, it does not pass the smell test for me. Folks, Anthony McMillan is back again. At least we got the long snapper re-signed. Jerry Jones is a GM, is a joke, and the joke is on us. Everyone spam AM in the comment section for Anthony McMillan. It is time to do some beer bongs as well. Appreciate that, Anthony. Awesome results here. Always fun and good to see. Producer Chris is grabbing the beers and the beer bong. It's a $100 super chat. Yeah, perfect. So you're going to do a, sh a shotgun here or no? Perfect, perfect. All right. Oh, we're down to three? Oh, we're getting light. I, I, I got to make a stop at some point, maybe Wednesday. All right. So two beer bongs coming up here for Anthony McMillan's $100 super chat. Things you just love to see happen. Have some fun on this one here. Get those air bubbles out of the way. There we go. Ooh, one more, one more. Slowly but surely. There we go. There we go. Bottoms up. There's one. What flavor is this? Ooh, mango. That makes sense. I was, on my I, I was expecting the live wire flavor. It's orange. And it turned out to not be live wire, which is fine. Not a problem at all there. Anthony, cheers to you. We'll give you some entries into the mini helmet too, by the way. All right, one more. Here we go. Here we go. Everybody keeps spamming AM in the comment section. Big money, Anthony, always coming in hot for us, baby. We appreciate that. <laughs> Ooh. Excuse me. All right, for Mark, $5. Oh, buddy. Uh, I'm going to be a fan of the view and convert it uh, non convert to, to non-binary before J Jerry Jones changes. I was hated for saying I wanted to tank. Only by tanking will there be change. This is a plan, though. Like, if you don't want to be aggressive now, you should tank. You, you should bottom out. Because my concern is this team is going to try to play it both ways, lose their top 10 quarterback, and go back to quarterback purgatory. That's not where I want to be. I don't want to be there. I would rather be bad than be average. You, you, are not, you are not an average team right now. You've had bad playoff results, make no mistake about it. But overall, relative to the NFL, you're not bad. Douglas Shepard, is it possible to use next year's comp picks for the draft? Uh, you can trade them, yes. Now, there are some conditions on it where... Now it's it does require you know to say a fifth round pick like a conditional fifth round pick that will be one of the comps most likely but sometimes you do lose those like if a player goes down doesn't play you probably get dinged down around there but that's it is possible or at least use your actual fifth round picks you know which would be not that different vanquish time this agency was all the Jones curse probably. Michael says, F. Trent Williams, dirty player. I, I guess I'm in the minority on this one. I don't think Trent was trying to be dirty. I think, he was, I think he got beat and was trying to recover. And I think if you asked Van Der Esch, maybe I'm sure he was upset and mad. But, and Williams made a mistake, clearly. But I don't think he was trying to hurt Van Der Esch. I don't think that. Maybe I'm wrong. From Mark, Tom, would you have redone, uh, or Tom would have redone Dak's contract, signed Henry Brown at a KC, re signed Hankins and Gilmore, signed Chase Young with a linebacker, draft best available, O line, D line, round one, and round two. 
all things that would have been possible had you been aggressive in free agency. And don't we feel better about your chances there? And then if that doesn't work, whenever it ends up being, year, two, three, four, whatever, then you start the rebuild. I would like to try to better maximize a window than what the Cowboys have done. Because even when the quarterbacks were cheap, they weren't spending money in free agency. They were saying, we're worried about it. You know, they're among the, the bottom teams in terms of cash spending per the NFL PA. That's what rebuilding teams do, not teams that win 12 games. That's not this year, but previous years. Chris B., is it possible for Diggs to redo the contract for a trade? Um, if he wanted to give money back, yes. But that dead cap money that's already been paid to him by the bills, signing bonuses and restructures mostly. So I have a tough time seeing Diggs say, yes, I will give up 10 to $15 million. Cowboys aren't going to pay extra money. We know how they operate. So because of that, it just, it's just not, it's not really in the cards. Uh, I, I don't think this year. Prediction time, as we are all in, down in the dumps about this Cowboys team so far. Will they make the playoffs in 2024? Why for yes, N for no. Get those answers in from the comments while I sip some water. Whew. A lot of no's in there. I still think they're a playoff team. The issue is they were the two seed last year. I think they're closer to being out of it than being a one seed this season. I, I, I think they should make the postseason. But NFC East is going to be better moving forward with the commanders getting a, a real quarterback for the first time in a long time. Um, raises, raises some issues there. It is mailbag time here on the show. There are two ways to get on said mailbag. Number one is use hashtag Cowboys. Or you can super chat. You will skip the line. Producer Chris will get you on screen. You know, outside of the mailbag if it came in previously or in the mailbag if it comes in during it. We will also get some super thanks that came in uh, over the last couple days here on the Cowboys Report. Get those super chats in right now or generic questions via hashtag Cowboys. From Mr. Man, which is what, my, uh, what Olivia calls my dog. Hey, Tom, are you going to scout the UFL this year? I'll keep an eye on it, but it's not a huge priority for me. And they tend to sign somebody, so we'll be aware of who the best players are. Now, all these next couple comments you saw came in via Super Thanks. Super Chats, we do on a live show. Allows you to donate, ask questions, comment, etc. Super Thanks, you can do it on demand, outside of live videos. Any Super Thanks you send in, we will give you some love and give you a shout out on the show. Marcus Arnold, five dollars, one of our best super thanksers, by the way. Thanks for what you do. We should trade our second round pick for Jonathan Taylor and a sixth round pick. The issue there, the Colts just paid Jonathan Taylor and they have no quality backup behind him. I don't foresee the Indy having any interest in doing that. From Mr. Man again, uh, Rochester, New York loves you and your family. Thank you, my friend. It doesn't matter if we have all pros at every position. If this team continues to be at the top of the league in penalties, we will be doomed. By the way, how many years have they been at the top of the league? Here are the numbers. I ran these just for you, my friend. Um, since Mike McCarthy took over, tied for second last year, tied for eighth in 2022, led the NFL in 2021, 11th in 2020. The penalty leaders... In the last four years, it's Arizona, the Dallas Cowboys, the Browns, the Jets, and the Bills. Not exactly good company to be in. You know, two of those teams have had playoff success in, in, in that time frame. It's not great. From Zeno saying, just what exactly is Jerry Jones doing? Does he expect that building to the draft will work? I've been watching this team for 11 years. I have three playoff wins to show for it. Unfortunately, this is just what Jerry Jones does. Nothing in free agency in the hope that players will draft. You draft will automatically be insane star players. I can't stand the Eagles. At least their fan base knows that their team is going to do stuff in free agency and attempt to be a competitive football team. That is my issue. They do draft pretty well relative to the rest of the league, 
but you can't be great at a third of your job and expect the total results to be good. Got to do something in free agency. From Travis Vergara, one of the things that I understand what talks about, would the Cowboys be brave enough to draft Michael Penix in the first round this year if he is available? Rent a tackle for the year, let them play out under Dak, draft a starting left tackle next year. It would make sense given all the one-year deals, would gain a high comp pick for him the following year. You'd get a third-round comp pick, best case, which isn't great value there. I'll say this. That is the conversation, if they have not reached a long-term deal yet with Dak Prescott, that they should have in the war room on draft nights. If you think there is a quarterback on the board at 24 who is going to be a franchise quarterback and you're not locked in with your guy, you should take them. You should, because the quarterback spot's too important. Now, my issue with that is, A, Jerry Jones said they're not going to. Who knows if he's telling the truth there or not. And maybe more importantly, B, I, don't, I have a lot of doubts about the Bo Nix, Michael Penix caliber quarterback being a franchise guy. They're not bad, but I think that their path to being a top 10 quarterback like Dak is is very limited. So assuming in some order, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, J.D. McCarthy are off the board, would you take a quarterback in round one this year? It's the pinned comment on today's video. Y for yes, N for no. From Mark, Tom, Dak has a no trade clause. Tell me how and what are the scenarios where we could trade him and get some good picks? That's if a dream, humor me, aloha. So that the trade clause causes issues where Dak has the power and... I would suspect that Dak Prescott, who is a year away from free agency himself, probably doesn't want to go to a new team and have that team give up premium assets for him. Because that makes his new team worse if, if the goal was to win a championship somewhere. Because if the goal was to get paid, Dak's a year away from that. He doesn't, he doesn't have to force his hand there. So I think the scenario would be you kind of ask Dak, hey, where do you want to go? And we'll just get what we can get for you. Because again, you screwed up the initial contract talks pretty badly. And now a year away, Dak has all the control. From not Jeremy Chugs' is burner, is this a soft rebuild? Maybe? It's, it's kind of like, Neither a rebuild nor an aggressive all-in path. They're not really doing anything. If it is a soft rebuild, they're kind of doing a bad job of it because they're just adding veterans and re-signing players and not getting younger and not moving on. Pieces won't be here next year. It, it just kind of feels like a... I don't know what the right word is here. It's, it's a continuation of the status quo. That's what this is. And I don't like that. I'd rather tear it down or go be aggressive. Got a deal for you guys from Fanatics. Not the Cowboys team shop. Fanatics. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. Get the NFL Jam team shirts. Pretty sure Chris is too young for that, which blows my mind. There's a bar in, in, there's a bar in, uh, in downtown that has NFL Jam. Maybe we'll go there one time. Uh, you can get Dak and Lamb. Maybe some more long-term stability. Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons. Or the throwback, the good old days. Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. Link will be in the comments section and the description of today's show. That's chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. From Merlin the Wizard, I will say this. If Steven doesn't want to pay that money to act, just freaking say so. We Be honest and go with Lance. See if he is good or bad. Again, I would agree. Make a decision. This idea of, ah, oh, we'll see, I hate. I hate it. Because waiting doesn't work. Waiting only works if the player gets worse. And if you're waiting, then what are you doing? So I, I have no interest in, going, in, in doing nothing with Dak. I agree with, with Merlin. Make a decision. From Zaire Brown, trade for Adam Thielen. Uh, the Panthers are already too light on passable receivers to justify trading one away. Um... So I, I, and Thielen was much better in Carolina this year. He still doesn't offer much separation, but there was nobody else that could do anything for them. Uh, Carolina is not going to trade Thielen. They need him to make Bryce Young better. Manuel, are there any good running backs left? Cowboys are not in good shape. There is a real chance 
that when the Cowboys are on the board in round two, every running back is still, is still on the clock. And come round three, all but maybe one or two are, 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 are on the board as well. So you could draft somebody. Free agency-wise, as of filming, you know, we'll see if Alexander Madison goes to the Raiders or not. J.K. Dobbins is out there as a kind of higher upside piece. Damian Harris. Deonta Foreman stands out to me as a good fit. He can be your stopgap. You missed on the true starting caliber guys, though. The Zach Moss interest should have been more aggressive there. Daniel M. Uh, bring back Hankins, Gilmore, Simon Simmons, maybe Chase Young if his price tag goes down. That'd be a doomsday defense under Mike Zimmer. That's all in. Uh, we're doing this live, of course, on our Monday live show. And Chase Young just signed a one year up to $13 million with the Saints. So that was, a, that was, you know, remove a digit up front. Take that one off of being above the Cowboys' preferred price range there. So no Chase Young. I would love to get Justin Simmons on this team. I, I like his play. His price tag has to drop a little bit, too. Like, that's, that's an upgrade on defense. He got better than Dante Fowler with Chase Young. Got Hankins and Gilmore back. Got a good safety. I'd have interest, but Cowboys won't go down that path most, most likely. From Tyler, is Dallas locked in to O-line in round one? I would guess probably. I, I would be very surprised if the Cowboys didn't take an offense line around. It have to be, I think uh, the board went really bad for them. Whether it's center or a left side player, I think they will be able to find one of those guys in round one. And look, they're going to end up drafting for need. And they need an offensive lineman. So who do you want the Cowboys to draft in round one this year? Any position, any player, keep it some realistic names. You know, I'd love to get Marvin Harrison Jr. It ain't going to happen. Sound off for me in the comments section. Robert, I think the Jones are quietly rebuilding, and by all in, they mean they draft future players. Jerry straight up said they weren't going to draft a future quarterback in round one. Like, and he used that as the example of like, what do you mean by all in? I'm not going to take a quarterback who's, who's not going to play in round one. What they meant by all in was they are, go they are going to be all in on different guys than previous years. They're going to be all in on Micah Parsons extension, C. Lamb extension. That's not what all in means. That's what they meant. And they could be quiet rebuilding, but if they are, they're doing a bad job of it. Why'd they sign Eric Kendricks? Why'd they bring back Jordan Lewis to, for one-year deals? Play young guys instead. Who cares if you're bad? So that, that's, my, that's the crux of my issue. Whatever path they're pursuing, win or, or rebuild, they're not, doing a, they're not doing a good job of it. From Connor, we're almost there. Draft a linebacker or running back and some O-line help, as well as signing Dobbins and re-signing Gilmore. Sign free agent defensive tackles. That's kind of my issue. Uh, I have three top 100 picks. So I'm going to get a starting linebacker, a running back, and O-line? That's not enough for me. And also, banking on four to three rookies is a lot. Also, the defense tackle market's bad. The available guys, again, as of filming, are like... Carlos Watkins is probably one of your top available DTs, bringing him back. Maybe get Clayus Campbell, which seems unlikely. So I, I still have too many needs and not enough draft picks and or good players in free agency. From Trevor, is Jerry Jones really going to sell the team? No. Stop watching Craig Carton. The only thing that guy knows is how to defraud people from tickets. That, that, is, that is all he knows. He, the fact that they ran with, he's going to sell the team. No, he's not. Jerry's never selling the team. Laughable. Laughable suggestion. Um, from, from Craig Carton to think that, oh, he's just, like, no, no, he's not. Stupid to even think it. That guy, that guy does not know ball at all. How we got a national show, I have no idea. Fox Sports is kind of clueless sometimes. What is your confidence level in the Cowboys' front office? Scale it for me from one to 10. One on the low end, 10 on the high end. Mark, Jerry will draft a tight end. Can't believe we missed uh, on Osiris. The issue is that that was a Mike McCarthy pick, I think. Mike wanted a, another tight end. 
And the board went badly, and they, they kind of panicked. They drafted for need. They get into trouble when they draft for need as opposed to best player available. And that is my concern for this upcoming class. You drafted Osiris Torrance, which they, they did not like him. I did. They did not. We're not talking about needing a new left tackle in round one. You're plugging in Osiris Torrance, left guard, and Tyler Smith is your new left tackle. We fixed it. But they took a backup tight end. Stupid. Ecuador man, does the DAC T shrink when it gets too hot? It's funny. I'll, I'll give him credit. That's a pretty, uh, pretty funny one. Uh, the uh, the uh, the digs one will tear. Uh, that's actually too far. I shouldn't. I shouldn't do that one. I know no, it's gone too far. Um, just be careful with the scissors one around the with scissors around the Michael Irving T-shirt. That one also might be too far, but it's kind of funny. Only the real ones know that one. So don't miss out on Cowboys free agency and draft coverage right here on the Cowboys Report. Hit that sub button right now. Chris B., the Saints had negative $80 million in cap and still spent more than us. Chris is right. It was actually like negative 100 almost, I think. Uh, the $13 million deal guaranteed for Chase Young that, is, of course, happened as we sit here filming this live would be more than what the Cowboys have given out in guaranteed money in like five years total. From some guy, last one here. Why are we so worried about 2025 cap? I'm not a cap nerd, but also no, I'm not really convinced that's the main reason we signed no one. They, as in the organization, continues to leak out, oh, that's what we're worried about, 2025 cap. They have a bunch of dead money. That's true. If they, re if they extend DAC, half of the dead money is no longer dead money. It's just part of the contract now. Um, they have about 90-ish million dollars in cap space for 2025. And some big guys are free agents. CeeDee Lamb, Tank Lawrence, Zach Martin might retire, uh, Brandon Cooks. Okay? You can pay Micah and bring his cap hit down for 2025. Lamb and Dak don't change it that much. And you have the third most players under contract. It's an excuse at the end. In the end, it is their excuse. Not, it's not a real reason. It's their excuse for it. The Super Chat menu today, $10. Drew Pearson mini helmet entry. $50 Beer Bong Hall of Fame. $20 is for a shot. Shout out to Anthony McMillan coming through with the $100 Super Chat earlier. We'll give him a bunch of, him a bunch of entries into the, uh, the mini helmet for the, beer, or for the Beer Bong, too. You, you have no idea what I was referencing with the Michael Irving scissors thing, are you? So he stabbed his teammate in the neck with scissors. Real thing that happened. There's a great, there's a great Jeff Perlman book on, on the, that Cowboys dynasty and the White House and everything. It was wild stuff. I, I, maybe I'll, maybe I'll, but I have it somewhere in my house. Maybe I'll, I'll give it to you. Yeah. The, the guy uh, was in front of Michael for a haircut, and Michael wanted to go first and stabbed him in the neck with scissors. Almost killed him. Covered up by Jerry somehow. Pretty impressive. Uh, crispy super chat nine and eight Dak leaves is on an old vet quarterback like Russ then they go seven and nine or seven and ten and aren't drafting high enough to get a real quarterback and they continue the cycle of actually being mediocre that's that's my concern that is my concern about it in the end very very concerned about it uh, Vanquish time with Jerry Jones. We simply signed veterans. Gam I, I miss, you know, gambling Jerry, Wildcat and Jerry. I, I miss him. He would have signed somebody. He'd have been aggressive. Steven? Ah, Steven ain't that guy anymore. He, 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 he ain't that guy, period, frankly. So what is your confidence level in this Dallas Cowboys front office? Scale it for me from 1 to 10. One the low end, ten the high, and I'm going to sip some water here. What's your confidence level in him? One, 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 zero. One, 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 two, one. Low numbers for a reason, folks. Not great. Simply not great. All right, if you have not already, please follow the Cowboys Report on Instagram. 
at Cowboys Report IG. We'll do short form videos over there, the occasional photo post as well. Um, but easy just to scroll through and see them all. I think a little bit better than even the YouTube shorts side. Because they'll put things you don't subscribe to in your feed on that front. Instagram, not so much. So, that, of course, they do a little bit too. But you'll, you'll see them all. You'll see stories too. So, go follow us on Instagram at Cowboys Report IG. Today, we're taking a look at 21, give or take. They did it for Deion Sanders because I love primetime. Draft prospects the Cowboys could take in round one of the NFL draft. Now, whether we like it or not, this Cowboys team is primed to draft for need. So keep that in mind. We'll break down 21 different names. And if you love the NFL draft, you should subscribe because I'm a big fan. I am what they call a draft nerd, and I am damn proud of it. We'll have Cowboys draft news, rumors, Cowboys mock drafts for you, live draft coverage this year right here on the Cowboys Report, all for free. Hit that sub button right now. Now, I think this team's top positions to consider in round one are left tackle slash left guard. I think wide receiver because of the value that could be there in round one. <laughs> and center, two big areas of need. Then I think a second tier to consider is cornerback. It's edge rusher. It's defense tackle. It's linebacker. You are survivable at most of those spots right now. Maybe not so much DT. Or you could just go pure BPA and just take the best player on the board, which you have to do some more stuff in free agency. You get yourself in that spot anyway. As for running back, no running backs on this list. There's not any worth taking in the first round. You can, and I would say probably will, end up leaving day two with a running back. I, I, I would gamble pretty heavily uh, on that being the likely outcome there. Now, in the words-ish of Magic Johnson, ain't going to be there. Uh, some names who are simply not going to be on the board for you, barring something bad happening to them. You know, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Joe Alt, Olufashanu, uh, Taliese Fuaga, I think are all going to be gone in the top 12-ish picks, give or take. Terion Arnold, Quinion Mitchell. I like both those corners. I think they go early. Dallas Turner might be the first defensive player taken. Jared Verse is the most likely of these 10 to be there for you in round one, but also really does feel like pushing it given the, the need that teams have of pass rushers in the 10-ish picks before you even get on the clock. We'll go by position here for a couple different groups. But who do you want the Cowboys to draft in round one? Keep it to the realistic names only for me in the comment section right now. Number one on the tackle list for me, slash maybe some guards get mixed in here. I'm going to risk it all for Amarius Mims. He has basically played a season's worth of snaps, but he's only raw in the sense that he hasn't played much football. And I, I would not be surprised if Mims does not get to you at pick number 24. If he does, though, I'm kind of skipping on up to the podium saying, let's ride. I got, I got a, a right tackle at Georgia. I think he can play left side in the NFL. Plus, there's not as many bad habits he's got to break either. Another name I'd love to get in round one, Troy Fatanu out of Washington. Uh, now, some view him as a guard. I think he can play left tackle. Either way, I need one of those two spots filled. So he and Troy, between him and Tyler Smith, I'm set. Um, I think that Mims and, and Troy Fatanu both go top 20. I will be sad if they do. If they don't, I'm going in. I, I'm missing on the top tackles already. I'm settling for two still very good prospects. Number three might be higher if I needed a right tackle. That's J.C. Latham. I don't know if he has the foot quickness and speed to hang at left tackle. I am worried about him playing right tackle as it is. He's a good prospect. If he's on the board, real chance he'd be one of, if not my top tackle left. But I worry about him having to flip over to the left side. I also worry about Tyler Guyton flipping over to the left side. You know, Mims is, is inexperienced. I think Guyton is wrong. 
And those are two different things. I, I have technique concerns with him. I would trust the Cowboys to help maximize the offensive line. I would bet that Guyton is not the top player on my board and might not be in the top five. But there's a real chance that in addition to Alt and Fashanu and Fuaga and even some of the, the center options we'll get to here momentarily, Mims, Fatanu, and Latham are all gone. And I got to take Guyton because I got to get a tackle early. That's my concern. Number five is Jordan Morgan. And if Jordan Morgan had arms that were two inches longer, this would be an awesome pick for Dallas. He'd be number three on my board. But for the Cowboys specifically, they don't ever really draft sub 33 inch players and put them at arm inch players and put them at tackle. And Jordan Morgan has short arms. That is something they have always valued. Whether we like it or not, that is the reality of how they tend to operate. But he's a good left tackle. Maybe he's a left guard instead. And maybe in that case, you put Tyler Smith out there. But if he's a guard, the Cowboys like him as much. It's a question that we've got to get figured out. Number six, Kingsley Suamatia out of BYU. I do like him. He's got really good arm length. He's built. He is cousin, by the way, of Panay Sewell and is basically built just like him. Like they're, they're, I thought this thing is very, very similar. He's played both left side and the right side. I think he still needs some technique development, by the way, but the arm length does check out. Of note, by the way, Troy Fatano is 34-inch arms. So the arm length is not a concern with him. I think some might have been worried about. He could play tackle. Cowboys jerseys for under $100. Well, it's $99.99, but call it 100 bucks there. Micah Parsons, Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, if maybe you're a bit worried about Dak not being there too much longer. Plus, the rookie will eventually have his own jersey. Go to chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. That link will be in the comments section and the description of today's video. It's chatsports.com slash Cowboys jersey. Over to the centers. I'd love to get Jackson Powers Johnson on this team. I think he is the best center prospect since Tyler Linderbaum. Kind of a low bar, but still counts. One hurry allowed. That was it. Now, Oregon's offense was a quick strike passing game, so you know, the center shouldn't allow very many pressures, but he was a good run blocker as well. I don't know if he gets to you, but I would be very happy if he did. Number two is right there with number three. Not a lot of separation for me. It's Graham Barton out of Duke. He has played center back in his freshman year was a left tackle for Duke and was banged up this year. Didn't play as well. I thought he was better in 2022 when he was healthier. Arm length concerns, he could play left guard or center for you. The Cowboys do love that positional flexibility. Zach Frazier is a player I do think that they like. Uh, and this is a, the coaches, wherever he goes, are going to love him. Broke his leg against, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure it was Baylor, Crawled off the field versus having to waste a timeout. Ultimate football guy. Did combine drills at breaking his leg a few months ago. It was wild to me. Uh, nasty football player. Did some signal stuff too. I might put Frazier over Barton when it's all said and done on my own board, but 2A, 2B for me there at the center spot. So in round one, which position would you rather draft if you were the Cowboys? C for center. O for offensive tackle, or OT for offensive tackle. Go vote in the comments. I want to mention some wide receivers because the board could fall a very intriguing way for you. Four names we'll mention. Go more in depth on them. Brian Thomas Jr., he might not be there for you. He might go like top 15, top 20. Uh, that's, the, that's like the stretch name on here, I think, a little bit. But A.D. Mitchell out of Texas could be an option. Xavier Worthy if you want the speed you don't have. Keon Coleman, C.D. Lamb's cousin, a bigger-bodied receiver. If you don't think Brian Thomas is going to be there, you know, throw in a Troy Franklin or a Lad McConkie. You got options there at the back end of round one. And the way I and I think the Cowboys view these receivers, it's a conversation they're going to have. Now, Brian Thomas was a stud for LSU this past year. Long and fast. A.D. Mitchell, also long and fast and freaky athletic. Xavier Orton is the fastest man alive. Keon Coleman didn't test that great, but for his size, actually not that bad. You want a jump ball guy? There you go. 
the intrigue of receiver in round one or even round two certainly makes sense. So would you draft a wide receiver in round one? Y for yes, N for no. Some cornerback prospects here, assuming the top two guys are off the board. Nate Wiggins had a combine meeting with the Dallas Cowboys. Kool-Aid McKinstry's medicals might cause him to drop a little bit. That's a red flag. Maybe he's a, a late round two option even still, somehow. Maybe a mid-round two option. Cooper DeGene at Iowa. Doesn't play much man. That might not make him a great scheme fit for Mike Zimmer. Nate Wiggins is the name I'm most intrigued by here. Here's the problem, though. You might not have the luxury, quote-unquote, of taking one of these very good cornerback prospects. All three guys put up very good numbers. They did not get beat very often. They were basically lockdown guys, or at least half-field guys, in the way that Cooper DeGene was. Mike Zimmer loves cornerbacks. That's his background. But you might not have the luxury in the end. I do want to mention some front four players here. Liatu Latu, talent-wise, could be a top 15 player. The medicals might cause him to fall. That's why he's on this list. Johnny Newton out of Illinois and Byron Murphy out of Texas are the two round one caliber, in my eyes, defensive tackle prospects. I like Devondre Sweat. I like McKinley Jackson. Those are day two picks, not round one picks. They don't have the athletic juice to justify a top 25 selection. These are both three te techniques, though. Maybe that's not what you need, necessarily. Darius Robinson could be a fun long-term tank. Lawrence Swift is kind of a base defensive end, reduced in size, kind of bigger body than what this team is used to. But can you spend a luxury rotation piece in round one? Kind of a need issue. I'll mention Chop Robinson here as a freaky athlete pass rusher, but again, that's kind of your third or fourth edge. Is that a proper need usage? Like Newton and Murphy might, if they get to me in round one, might be the best guy on my board. I'd be happy with those picks, but this team has to address bigger needs. And if they're not going to do it in free agency, they got to find a way to do it in the draft. And that means they might go for need over the pure best player on their board. So grade Cowboys free agency for me, A, B, C, D, or F. I'll give some shout outs here. I, guys, I, I like Tavondre Sweat. He's not, you can't take a two-down player in round one when you got all these other needs. And I don't think he's going to go round one anyway. Trade down around round two if you want him. Uh, X, C, F, F, D, F, 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 D, 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 F plus, F plus. A lot of Ds in there. CJ DeYoung. $10, that puts him into our signed uh, Drew Pearson mini helmet giveaway at the end of the month. Thank you, CJ. CJ DY3, that's kind of more, that might be as too many uh, words as CJ the Young. Uh, 0.69 confidence level. My concern during just 50 is I'm going to die before they win another Super Bowl. I hope that's not the case, CJ, because then we're all going to feel real bad. Chris B., Rather burn 100 than give Jerry my, my money for a jersey. It's through Fanatics if that makes you feel better, Crispy. It's through Fanatics and not the Cowboys team shop. Crispy, give me a, a, a wide receiver round one. I deserve a fun player after BS. It's a good receiver class. I'd love to fill all of my needs so I can find the value in round two. I'd love that. Or I can take Tavondre Sweat in round two. But... If you don't have a left tackle or a running back, those might have to be two of your first picks. And if the board doesn't fall your way, that's how you end up reaching for somebody you maybe don't want to reach for. If you haven't already, once again, please hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Free Cowboys videos multiple times per day, each and every day single day right here on the channel. We are also on Instagram now, a page dedicated exclusively to the Cowboys Report that we've spun up. Uh, it's on Instagram at Cowboys Report IG. If you missed anything on today's show, here's what's coming up on Loop. The Cowboys news and rumors, some trade targets for Dallas, a mailbag that came in, 
and the Cowboys draft targets we just went through. It's all coming up on Loop right now. The Cowboys Report is also on Instagram, folks. Give us a follow over there at Cowboys Report IG. We'll post some more short-form videos on that platform, including one we did earlier this afternoon before our live show about the official announcement that Leighton Van Der Esch has called it a career. Uh, officially, I st the Cowboys had already cut him. I think this was a timing thing for Dallas of let's release Van Der Esch. Uh, to guarantee him the base salary stuff that he was owed and not to do the whole process of injury guarantee, whatever. He still gets that, and he does, as expected, you know, call it a career. So I, I appreciate what Van Der Esch was able to do before the injuries just became too much for him. Show him some love by typing LVE in the comments section. Let's go to the other news here, which was, I was kind of surprised this one came down the way it did. The Cowboys and Dak Prescott agreed to, I'm calling it a, a little baby restructure on his contract. It's noteworthy for a couple different reasons here. It's only a fraction of the new money he was going to be due this year. He had a $5 million roster bonus. That saves $4 million in cap space because the Cowboys added void years onto his contract. That actually required an agreement from Dak Prescott slash Todd France to do. It was not a simple restructure that was already baked into the deal. The Cowboys had to get Dak to agree to do that. It does bring down his cap it fairly slightly to about $55.5 million. The cap hit next year, and we'll just round out, $40.5 million when he's not under contract. It does still leave his sizable $29 million base salary untouched at this time it doesn't really do that much for you in 2024 helps pay for some you know vet minimum re-signings or signings you'll eventually end up making what it does do however is keep the door open for an extension which the team continues to push through public outlets and leaks to the media etc that the, ex the extension is their plan. They plan to get a deal done with, with, with Prescott in the end. The, p the plan and the process to do that, I think, has been pretty bad. If the reports of, hey, maybe mid-August is the time frame there, that doesn't really help you very much right now, and I question the purpose of doing it that way, but you pair the plan to do it in mid-August with this move, and it actually does align. It's just not the alignment I would have preferred. I have more on this to come here, but will the Cowboys extend Dak Prescott, whether it's now or at least before the start of this year's NFL season? Y for yes, N for no. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments section, the pinned comment, actually, of today's video. I still, as I've said before, I need to see them do it first. You know, Stephen Jones said, we think it'll be done without much fanfare, or just kind of without much conversation. Clearly not the case. We're already way past that point. What is noteworthy to me is what Michael Gelkin sent out about the restructure plan, saying, quote, the Cowboys and Dak Prescott are off to a strong start in contract talks, demonstrating collaborative ability to help the team manage finances. Prescott willing to add two void years into $4 million in 2024 cap savings. Good sign for capacity to, to achieve an extension. Here's my issue. Why are they just now starting? If we, if we take all of these reports as true, and it's not some grand conspiracy to cover up a rebuild plan, but you're also doing a bad job of rebuilding if that's the case, you are starting it in mid-March when the rest of the NFL has already paid dudes in free agency? I still hate it here. This is not a good process. So maybe they actually do want to wait until August to do something with the quarterback contract, which again, I think is stupid. Either do it now or rebuild. I, there's, you know, you're not getting the benefits of it. You know what they're going to do? They're going to roll that cap space over. They're going to sit there and say, oh, we didn't have the money to do anything in free agency and then have a bunch of money in, in, at the end of the year once they pay CD Lamb 2 and roll over like 30 or $40 million. Yikes. Now, Stephen Jones did make this comment leading into the news of the restructure at the PBR thing because the Cowboys would rather do, uh, do publicity events than, you know, do for agency work. Dak is willing to work with us, and we've had great discussions about him and his contract. He's, an, he's all in. 
kill me now, on working with us, and we've had personal discussions with Dak as well. Other than that, that's about all we'll say about our negotiations with him. We, we want to keep those private. We don't want to get into timelines or anything like that. Certainly a priority of ours. That quote does make sense in hindsight uh, because you had to negotiate with Dak to make sure that that goes down. You couldn't just do it on your own. So maybe Stephen Jones and Todd France have communicated. Or maybe, maybe the Jones boys and Stephen tried to kind of backdoor their way without Todd France, which would not be the first time they've tried to go around the agent to squeeze in a deal, which does not go over well once the agent finds out about it. Whatever the Cowboys' true plan is, it remains pretty damned messy and murky. It's not a good place to be in. I don't like their process at this stage. So we'll see what else happens, but I don't think the DAC wars will be ended anytime soon. Now, we are losing the March sub battle against Giants now. We're down by, I will round up and say 500 subs. The Giants have done things in free agency, so we're playing behind the eight ball from that perspective. If you want more free Cowboys videos, hit that sub button for me right now. Let's talk some free agency options here, then we'll go back to some news items for Dallas. Blogging the Boys suggested the Cowboys pursue J.K. Dobbins, an NFL free agency. And I do think this makes some sense. I also think there are some very valid cons here. Upside-wise, Dobbins is the best player available at the running back position. But it's upside because he's been unable to stay healthy for far too long in his NFL career, and that's a very real, real red flag. A lot more on this to come. But would you sign J.K. Dobbins? S for sign, P for you'd pass, you go in a different direction. Get those votes in for me right now. When Dobbins has played, this has been a almost six yard per carry back. And that is very, very valuable. And that is, that's a good full yard better than anyone else out there in the free agency market can offer at this stage. It's just that he's played nine games in three years, which is a horrible ratio. And if you sign J.K. Dobbins, you still can't trust him to, to, to be your guy. So Dobbins stands out there as among the better options. Alexander Madison, as of filming, visiting the Raiders. Uh, scat back types like Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Jarek McKinnon, uh, more lead back types, Deonta Foreman, Damian Harris, Ezekiel Elliott coming off another down year in New England, Cordero Patterson, uh, kind of a third down back, but he's up there in age two. Maybe a gamble on previously good results, Rashad Penny, Cam Akers. All of those things could make some sense. I'll keep including Rico Dowdle here, too, since he's a free agent after all. Uh, he would be the RB1 if you were to re-sign on what I assume would be a cheap one-year deal, little to no guaranteed money. And it's Deuce Vaughn who could compete for a third down back role. Lipke could be a, a power back slash fullback for you. Malik Davis, Snoop Connor are fighting for maybe RB3 or 4. You don't want those guys starting real snaps for you. And it's specifically for J.K. Dobbins, but in general, too, a post-draft signing could make some sense. And I could see Dallas saying, we're going to wait. We're going to wait and see how the draft plays out. Because those backs, most of them should still be available after the draft. Because at a certain point, the backs want to wait too. What they don't want to do is sign with Dallas and then have Dallas spend a second round pick on a back. And go, ah, well, now I'm kind of not going to have the same role I was going to have previously. So I think waiting could provide some clarity for both sides. And both sides might view it as better financially for them too. Regardless of who that back ends up being. Now, Cowboys NFL Jam shirts are on sale for you guys. Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs, Micah Parsons, or the throwbacks to the good old days, Trey Aikman and Michael Irvin, all through Fanatics, not the Cowboys team shop. Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. We'll put that link in the comment section and the description of today's show. That's Chatsports.com slash Cowboys Jam. The other free agent name mentioned by Blogging the Boys was Michael Thomas, and I have thoughts on this one. Uh, wide receiver is a need, maybe not a massive need for Dallas, with Michael Gallup now officially released. It's great wide receiver one in CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, who I think could be your third option if we put Jake Ferguson here on this list at tight end as option two, Jalen Tolbert. Kevontae Turpin, Jalen Brooks, a couple former UDFAs, veterans like my, uh, Martavis Bryant, Racy McMath. I would like to add some more wide receiver talent. Um, however, 
I don't know if Michael Thomas adds that to you. Um, it, it doesn't really make any sense. Um, Thomas has missed a ton of games. He's played 20 games in the past three years. The, the 1,700-yard receiver is gone. He ain't coming back anytime soon. I, I am simply not a huge fan of going down this route for Dallas. I get that he's a big name, but Thomas doesn't offer speed or big plays anymore, at least not at a consistent enough clip to justify it. And that's what I'm searching for at wide receiver. The thing that Michael Thomas did great was slants, and teams could not stop. That's why Slant Boy was never an insult, because they couldn't stop him. Who would I rather call a slant for in, in 2024? CeeDee Lamb? Michael Thomas. Brandon Cooks? Michael Thomas. Want to go get a receiver? I'd say draft somebody. But you got to fill other needs to be in a position to do that luxury, quote unquote. So name a free agent who you would like to sign. Could be Michael Thomas, J.K. Dobbins, or somebody else altogether. Get that answer in for me in the comments section right now. One more minor news item. Al Harris has had a promotion in title and rank. He has now added assistant head coach to his title, um, which I think is noteworthy. I, again, I don't know if he's ever going to make a great defensive coordinator or if he's going to be the schematic guy. He might fall into the Mike Vrabel bucket. And this might be a hot take as well. Who you know, Vrabel wasn't that great as a defensive coordinator. However, he was a great position coach and became a very, very good NFL head coach. And maybe the things that Al Harris does best, leadership, technique stuff, translate better to you know, head, head coaching roles than it would be straight defensive coordinator. But I do like the promotion for Al Harris. You know, the Cowboys blocked him from going to Washington. And this is a good way of, if he really did want to go to D.C., we'll see if that's the case or not. This is a good way to keep him nice and happy. So great Cowboys free agency so far. A, B, C, D, or S? Or F. I think I said S there somehow. S for sad. So, uh, some super chats we'll get to here. And get your comments in. In the meantime, as it's all Fs at this stage. Ecuador, man, who gives a damn? They're not our quarterback. Other teams' problems. The reason why I think it's important to know how things look across the NFL is it's all a comparison. Like, you want to know what the market looks like for other teams, what those other teams have, because play is all relative. It's very easy to get too high or too low if you're only watching one team play. I'm not saying that's what the case was you're doing there at Ecuador, but I think just in general... That's something you should always be aware of. Like, I think the Cowboys made a mistake the way they judge the running back market. The Zach Moss deal would have been a good one. And I think other teams signed backs that kind of got, got, you know, caught flat-footed. Draft time. You want to know what other teams have around you. Otherwise, you might trade down too far or trade up when you didn't need to, something along those lines. So I do think knowing what the overall needs and talent level and play from other quarterbacks like we mentioned those guys right Herbert Murray Trevor Lawrence will soon join that list they all became the highest paid quarterback in football or close to it so that's that's the market you're competing against contract wise from the great Duke Bothers haven't heard updates on Diggs or Overshone think they'll be ready by September expectation is those guys are going to go for at least a start training camp those injuries happened early enough Overshone's in particular I think training camp is a very real uh, expectation for them to return. The now return to performance, we shall see uh, on that front. That's, that's always a bit more anxiety-inducing. Delunatic, two free agency signings you would like Stephen Jones to make today. Uh, anybody. Um, okay, honest answer, honest answer. Bring back Stephon Gilmore and make your pick of a veteran running back. I'd love to find that offensive line, but that market sucks, and just, I, don't, I don't see him going down that path, frankly. Uh, we get to Mark Super Chat here momentarily. Uh, of note, the Niners are going to forfeit their fifth-round pick next year and have their fourth-round pick move to the back end of the round after a league review found administrative payroll accounting errors 
that resulted in a misreporting of the club's cumulative player compensation. Uh, NFL realized they would have been under cap anyway, but they made a go- they made an o- oopsie. So I'm I'm gonna fire off a quick tweet here. Ooh, what should I tweet about this? This is fraud. This is I'm, maybe maybe just this is fraud. There's a way to tie this in. Was it 2022? Let me let me check that. Yeah, at the end of the 2022 year, I got it. This is fraud. They should forfeit the 2022 playoff games. There we go. Let's go forfeit. There we go. There we go. Decision made. We we fixed it. Uh, Mark's five dollars super chat here. I think Jerry Jones is going to end the season with Dak fifty-eight million to see how he does. I don't agree with that, and that's coming from a guy who does not like Dak. Clowns. It is down to fifty-five now. If that makes you feel better, it shouldn't at all. Um, we know exactly how that's going to go. By the way, just like the past playoff games have all gone, like it's it's. The definition, it's worse than the definition of insanity to do a, make the team worse when we knew it wasn't good enough last time. Like, that's, that's just, like, how do we think that's going to go, you know? I, I just don't get it. It's a lunatic. Percent chance that 73, Tyler Smith is our left tackle week one. Hope your family is good. Thank you, lunatic. I appreciate that. 40%? I think they want to draft somebody in round one at, to play left tackle. I don't know if they'll find that guy. M- maybe 30, 35%. I think they, I think they think he's going to be best at guard. But depending on how the board falls for you, left tackle for Tyler Smith might be your best option. So possible for sure. For Mark, we signed Hankins by chance. Not yet. I know Seattle's expressed some interest in him with Adam Dirty up there. Uh, why chances are our only run stopper? JJ and his infinite wisdom believes Bass and Sam can step right in. I have no words, Tom. I would be... The Hankins one, like, they are going to get Mozzie Smith's weight back up. Uh, Brian brought us a reported that they're going to have him play nose guard, thank God. You still need a v- veteran option. And the vet options are not very good outside of Hankins. And I really can't add draft a starting caliber nose guard to my needs list right now. I got, I got to find a left side player. I'd love to find a center. I'd love to find a wide receiver. I'd love to find a linebacker. I'd love to, I need to find defensive end depth. Wouldn't mind a corner. Would love a center. I can't add nose guard to that list too when, when I just spent a first round pick there. That's why you want to go the, the vet route. Lone Wolf, thoughts on the 105 through the fan controversy? Uh, I assume this is about the, the Dak stuff. So if you haven't heard already, uh, Dak, first off, Dak struck first, I guess, in terms of the, the lawsuit battle. Uh, what happened was, and this, I'll, I'll put this, all allegedly, that way I can clear it out of the way and, and not have to say allegedly 10,000 times here. Um, uh, Dak had been accused of sexual assault uh, from a 2017 incident with her and, her and her lawyers sending Dak a letter saying, we won't go public or seek a criminal investigation if you give us $100 million. Now that, that happened in f- late February, almost, almost seven years to the day of the incident, which between that and $100 million has led many Cowboys fans to go, that doesn't pass the smell test. Uh, it also seemingly didn't pass the... Uh, National fan smell test because the response was all jokes on social media. They did not take it very seriously, which I, I don't like in general, but so be it. Uh, then 105 through the fan let the accuser's lawyer come on and without really challenging them on any of the facts, just kind of like lay out their angle to it, which is very unusual to have happen. Um, you might get some statements from the, from the lawyers involved, but radio interviews don't happen very often. It also raised concerns when it went on the show of the guy that had wished Dak got hurt and said he'd never play again and has, you know, made maybe some, not maybe, has made racial comments in the past. 
Um, and then also raised red flags. Alleg this part's very much legit because the Facebook account's been deleted, but there were screenshots of the lawyer saying that Dak sucks and hating on him and saying uh, he's a real Cowboy fan because he hates Dak. Uh, so, frankly, to answer it shortly, I don't think they handled it that great. And I'm not trying to take shots at him because I know a bunch of people over there that, that are, you know, are good people. But I don't think that's the way to go about it, frankly. Um, if we are being honest, what I do is not journalism. And what 105 of the fan is, does isn't really journalism. So I think you can just let the real journalists handle that. And let the courts play it out rather than kind of give an open platform for just the, the ones that I know they invited Dak's lawyer. But of course he said no. Um, also, police are investigating both sides of it. Uh, I don't think there can be any civil case from her end because the statute of limitations already expired. So there's just a lot of, a lot of, it's messy across the board. How about that? From Mark, $5 super chat. Thank you, Mark. Scraped by two decent teams in Miami and Detroit. Got killed. Scored 10 on the Niners and Bills. Jerry's all in is replacing Armstrong with Sam, losing a center and such. They're not all in. They're just not. This all in is not how everyone else views all in. I'll stick with the poker analogy I've made before. Cowboys are sitting on 9, 10 of hearts or whatever flop you want to go with. And Jerry says, I'm all in while pushing in three chips. The other goes, sir, you're not all in. He goes, my definition is different than your definition. Too bad, Jerry. There's one definition of all in. We can't just twist our words and spin it to be like, ah, we're all in on different guys. It's not what all in means. They also, in many ways, are non-committal to like everyone in the organization right now. Like, very, very disappointed with the handle things so far. Here's today's super chat menu: ten dollars, the Drew Pearson mini helmet, signed mini helmet raffle entry. A lot of names in there already. Fifty dollars, you're going to the Beer Bong Hall of Fame. Twenty bucks, the deal of the day is a shot. So fifty dollars for the Beer Bong, twenty for a shot. 10 to go in the uh, Drew Pearson mini helmet, signed mini helmet raffle. Lone Wolf, very nuanced take. I appreciate the, the thoughtfulness. Uh, thank you, Lone. I hope I handled that decently well enough. I am of the opinion of let things play out. They, they will play themselves out. Sometimes it's okay to not have a take on something, especially when it's you know far more serious matter. So um, I, will, I will both sides that a little bit if I did that properly, I, I hope. If you have not already, please follow the Cowboys Report on Instagram. We'll post short form videos up there as well. At Cowboys Report IG is that handle. It is linked uh, in the comments, I believe. Plus, it's you type in Cowboys Report, you should find it pretty quickly on Instagram. Five more dollars from Mark Dukes, Hoff, Bass, Sam to replace Pollard, Beatish, Tyrone, and Armstrong. I ain't those starters need upgrades, and this ain't it. I hope I am wrong, clowns. Should I do a, a, another clown thumbnail? Because that worked to get Eric uh, to get uh, Eric Kendrick signed. Well, I completely agree. I will say, I think at least two of those guys will be placed via early round draft picks. But that's not. You only have so many draft picks. Uh, this team on paper, I don't see very many paths to being better from what it was last year outside of significant improvement from various players on your roster. And why would you gamble on that if you're all in? Chris B., try using Jerry Jones' all in at Vegas. Good luck. They'll say that's not how it works, sir. Please leave the, the uh, table. It's just not. You, it's, you can't just like invent your own definitions of words and say, oh, well, I, have, I, have, I think it means a different thing. No. It's not how this works. You have to be specific and be accurate with your terminology there. This is the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. Today's show, I figured we'd take a look at some potential trade targets for the Cowboys. NFL free agency winding down. The Cowboys, again, have done very, very little in the outside market. So some trade options for Dallas. Now, if they make a trade, we will have a video for you. Hit that sub button if you haven't already done so, for more free Dallas Cowboys YouTube videos. 
I want to begin with my favorite one, and this is Khalil Herbert of the Chicago Bears. The Bears paid big money to DeAndre Swift. They drafted Roshan Johnson the third round last year, and they have zero day three draft picks. So Khalil Herbert kind of stuck his RB3 in Chicago, I think makes a lot of sense for a team like Dallas. He's been fairly productive in the past. You could pair him with a third down back with him to kind of be your early down back in Dallas. And in theory, I don't think he's going to be that expensive. The running back trade market has not been very good for a long time. DeAndre Swift went for a future, future day three pick. That's like two rounds discounted from where it is. And I think given what the Bears don't have in terms of draft capital, what they do have at the running back position, I think that makes for a logical trade partner. Now, originally I was going to, do, I was going to make this a fifth round pick. But I'm like, you know what? Running backs are devalued still, at least in the trade market. The running back, the, the contract market was a little bit better, still not as high as it once was. If they want the fifth, sure. Maybe they'll settle for that sixth round selection. So I'm going to go this path. I am going to go with the Cowboys getting a, giving up a sixth round pick. Bears give up Khalil Herbert. Dallas can still draft a back, but it gives them a, a Zach Moss caliber free agent addition, basically. Contract's fairly cheap, only for a year. Costs them a day three pick that they could use on a backup defensive tackle, whatever. I think that'd be a good trade for Dallas. Now, I know I will see other running backs in the uh, comments, so I did want to mention a few of them here. Uh, many of you have asked about these first two names, Tyler Algier, Damian Pierce. Both these guys are still the RB2 for their respective teams, so maybe Atlanta goes, we only need B. John Robinson. Maybe Houston goes, we only need Joe Mixon, which I don't really agree with right there. I think there's a decent chance those two guys stay because they are so cheap and they are top backups. Uh, Jeff Wilson, meanwhile, could be cut even by Miami. He's fairly inexpensive, only a couple million dollars. I'm a bit surprised they haven't cut him already, frankly. And they go pretty deep at running back. You know, they've got their top guys, Devon H.A., who's not going to be traded, Raheem Mostert, you know, Savan Ahmed, and Chris Brooks. So Wilson's RB3 or 4 at best. So I do think exploring the trade market for a running back makes a lot of sense. So should the Cowboys trade for a running back, potentially in addition to drafting one? It's the pinned comment on today's show. If that ad comes on YouTube, Take advantage of it. Why for yes, N for no. Another one of my favorite options here is Daxton Hill. That is the Bengals defensive back. He was a safety last year for Cincinnati. The difference is Daxton Hill has now seen the Bengals add both Von Bell and Geno Stone as potential starters, leaving him kind of without a position. I think his best spot might be nickel corner. Now, you already did bring back Jordan Lewis, but he's pretty cheap. I think exploring, seeing what the cost is of a, of a former first-round pick who has some ball-hawking abilities would be very intriguing. Would the Bengals give him for next to nothing? No, I don't think so. The lack of a fourth-round pick could be an issue there. That's, that's a name I'm very intrigued by. Next up is Walker Little of the Jacksonville Jags. Now, when Tyron Smith first got hurt, the, you know, not first, but the last time he got hurt real bad, the Cowboys had been linked to Walker Little per a Jacksonville report. Walker Little is right now kind of stuck as the swing tackle in Jacksonville, behind Anton Harrison and behind Cam Robinson. The numbers have been okay, but if you could get him for a day three pick, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking day three picks pretty much across the board here, that could solidify your left tackle for a little bit and be a better option than, than a veteran. You can still draft somebody too if you really wanted to. A more expensive but also better option could be Garrett Bowles out in Denver. Now, he's due $16 million this year. That is an issue for a team that doesn't like spending very big amounts of money, and I understand it. He's a solid tackle, though. He's not a superstar player. Uh, $16 million, though, it's almost what Jonah Williams got, and Williams is not better than Garrett Bowles is. I don't know if Denver's going to shop him, I have a better chance of getting him than Cortland Sutton, who I don't think is actually available, by the way, anymore. But Bowles is a, Bowles and Little, left tackle options that are tough to find in free agency or the trade market. Now remember, if you haven't already, to please subscribe. We'll do draft targets. We'll do some more free agency targets as well. Just talking trades today. Daily videos, frankly, multiple times per day. Hit that sub button right now. 
Now, this one is more your pipe dream, but this is somebody in J.C. Horn of the Panthers that we know the Dallas Cowboys loved. That they were, they were thinking it was going to be J.C. Horn or Patrick Sertan. They were going back and forth on which one they were going to try to acquire, thinking about it, thinking about it. Ended up both guys went off the board, and they settled, quote-unquote, for a trade down in Micah Parsons. And boy, uh, that sure worked out pretty well for them, didn't it? J.C. Horn's biggest issue? He can't stay healthy. When he has played... He has been really good. Um, the issue is he has not played very much. So I have no idea what his trade value would be as Denver overhauls their secondary and has 1.5 good players out there, not including Jason Horn and Dane Jackson and maybe Troy Hill too. I think it might be a they want more than Dallas would be willing to give up. But if Carolina is still in kind of like fire sale, rebuild, a weird adjustment time frame mode, play the Cowboys liked. It's a Will McClay special right there. So name a player, realistic please, who you would like the Dallas Cowboys to trade for. Sound off for me in the comments section right now. Another potential trade target is Hassan Reddick. Now this, I'm only putting him on here because Mike Fisher reported the Cowboys had interest in Reddick, Philadelphia has once again begun to overhaul their pass rushing room. They're keeping Josh Sweat. Uh, they spent big money on Bryce Huff. They have Nolan Smith still. They uh, brought back Brandon Graham. I think they'll move Reddick, but he wants a big contract. You know, he's going to be pushing for something in that $20 million per year range, I would bet. Even if he settles for 16 million, million dollars that's still a little bit higher than what the Cowboys typically like to do so I wanted to put him on here because he has been you know linked before by fish as I said last time I would be very surprised if this went down if he gets cut non-zero chance of that uh, potentially at that stage we could revisit it let's get some defensive linemen up in this piece and I, I thought about Broderick Martin, too, but he was just drafted, so we'll pass on him for now. I would keep an eye on how the market and how the Lions plan to utilize Levi, uh, Levi Onzerike, the former Washington Husky who I liked coming out of, of his draft class. Uh, the issue for Onzerike is he has not really been able to play all that much. 2021, that, that year he came out, he had 35 tackles, a couple TFLs, a sack, Showing some promise there. Uh, he just, but then he has battled injuries for a good portion of his time in the NFL. He had a back injury, massive red flag. Um, he didn't play at all in 2022. He barely played at all in 2023. I think the Cowboys, plus he's from Allen, Texas, by the way, have a decent amount of interest in him. If the medical checks out, that's a way to provide some defensive tackle depth that this team is going to be challenged to get because the free agency market was so wildly out of control. Now, what do you think? The percent chance that Dallas makes a trade by the end of the draft, not a pure draft pick only trade, so they trade for or away involving a player. I think that percent chance is. Go vote in the comments. Another lion, which is kind of funny how it all turned out there, uh, Malcolm Rodriguez. Now, I would argue through little fault of his own, he has kind of been phased out of the Lions linebacking core. It's been uh, Alex Anzalone. It's been Derek Barnes, uh, Jalen Reeves-Maben. Jack Campbell was their first round pick. Rodriguez, who I think if he had been on the board and the Cowboys took Devin Harper, was going to be their next pick, by the way. Dallas could rectify that. I think a day three pick is all it would cost and you're getting a better player than you'd probably get with that you know, sixth-round late pick at the linebacker spot. Another defensive tackle option, you could put a couple different Steelers on this list. Um, you, know, you could put maybe an Isaiah Loudermilk, a Montrevis Adams maybe too. I'll go with the Marvin Leal, the, the former third-round pick. Always was kind of a tweener for me, which does raise concerns. But Cameron Hayward, Keanu Benton, Larry Ogunjobi, all head of those last three names I mentioned. Former third-round pick, does have talent. Maybe Mike Zimmer could maximize him in a better, more impactful way. But I'm trying to find some buy-low draft options here that wouldn't cost you too much and fill in some much-needed depth 
on the back end. You knew he was going to be on here, didn't you? Stefan Diggs, almost required by my contractual uh, rule to do it. He continues to mention in trade rumors, uh, which I, I continue to not buy them. So if it's your first time watching, allow me to explain why I don't think it happens. It's money. The Bills trade away Stephon Diggs, and they lose three-plus million dollars in salary cap space versus if they just kept him on the active roster. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would they do that? Now, if they don't adjust his cap hit, and he carries that big old cap hit of $28 million ish in the next year, I think there is a real chance next offseason he gets dealt. But this year, it does not pass the smell test.